I it, see that. That's actually. It, I, I understand the. It dogma amazes me. It, it, uh, you can call it dogmatic. You can no, call I it. Only say, I only say you can call it catmatic. Look, look. Uh, it's, look, look. It's repeated argument. No problem. It has nothing to do the with point is this, though: is it a valid argument? Call it dogmatic, catmatic, lizardmatic. No problem. The point is this: is the argument valid? You, what you're doing here is. We're seeing there's Jesus, Adam, Prophet Muhammad, Moses, Abraham, and many other prophets. They all do not have the innate abilities to do miracles, period. Right, right. And that's why in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 22, it says Jesus of Nazareth, a man chosen by God with wonders, miracles, and signs, which God did by him, and you are a witness to it. Meaning, this verse in the Bible clearly is telling you as a Christian that Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, a man appointed by God, does miracles, wonders, and signs yeah. through the permission of God. I don't know how so much I'll more, just, just, how much more it can be clear, Mark. So please tell me, speak please speak on it and tell me why does Jesus, please, right, right. what does Jesus innately have that other prophets who did miracles with the permission of God has? Please tell me something about Jesus, peace be upon him, which we believe in, we honor him. But I'm trying to say, yeah. please tell me something he innately has that the other prophets did not have. Right, so I'll speak, I'll speak, uh, so obviously moving on from our point previous about Jesus in the image and likeness of God, I do think that the permission aspect that you're bringing up is a completely separate point, but I will move on from that in terms of what you're saying now. In regards to you're saying, I do not witness, you said this specifically, I do not witness God when I look at Jesus. I want to give you an example. If you were to have a son, and that son acts in accordance to your image and your likeness. When somebody sees that child, they say, like father, like son. Okay. When they see the son, yes. they have a perception no problem. of the father. Okay. So when I witness Jesus Christ, even though I witness him, it is not to say that I do not have a perception of his heavenly father. As I witness the son, I see the Father, like Father, like Son. What is it specifically that I am witnessing? That Jesus acts in perfect accordance to the image and likeness of God. And I think I'll uh, leave it there. Just before you uh, go, just one last point. Because I do feel the Holy Spirit allowed me to make that point. I mean, I think you made that point. Um, uh, I, I, I'll make that, it very that, simple. That was only for God to judge. No, that's fine, that's fine. I'll make but one... I appreciate uh, your time. That's fine, thank you very much, Marcus. I really appreciate it. Just one point time. that I'll leave you with, um, just so you understand that why your point is... I've given you two examples why it is invalid. Let me add on to it so you can maybe use a better right. argument next time. Imagine I have a son. Imagine I have a son. Somebody else that doesn't look like me says, I'm Ali's son. And I go, why are you my son? Because he goes, Ali, don't you do boxing? I go, yeah, I do. He's like, I do boxing. I'm like, okay. He's like, Ali, do you not go for a jogs every Wednesday? Yeah. He goes, I go for a jog every Wednesday. And then my real son comes. He goes, no, no, I'm his son. How do I know which one's my son? Because they both have something that I am known for. So can you please tell me a blonde guy with blue eyes, yeah, who claims to be my son. I don't have blonde hair, or blue eyes, yeah. So. How am I going to know which one is my son? Those who know the father hmm? will know the son. Brother, you're and preaching. Please can, please, can you that logically answer? No, it's not. Look, Those who know look, the look. The point, will know the point the I'm son. saying is this. The reason I gave okay. this example is because the blonde guy, the blonde boy with the blue eyes, yeah. he is not my son. Because you know why? why? Because number one, if he is, there has to be a likeness of human nature. You are equating God to a man. There is nothing a man has in his, in his sense. For example, I'm flesh. Is God flesh? No. Thank you. So it's not his likeness. For example, I need to speak with my tongue. If I don't have a tongue, I won't be speaking. Does God have a tongue? Thank you. So what I'm seeing is in a nutshell, when you talk about likeness, you're given attributes. He gave life to the dead so I'll with the permission of God. Can he do it in himself? No, he can't. There is zero likeness. So I'll leave it with that, Mark, because you can your make the end point. God, you make the last point. Your idea of God is only expressed with a man with flesh and a man with a tongue. You cannot okay. understand God except through the vehicle of mankind. What's the vehicle of mankind? Well, I, I, one second. I understand God. Look, I'm a Muslim. I came to Islam 10 years ago. the vehicle of creation Marcus, Marcus, God. I understand God. Let me tell you something. And when I understand... No, 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 it doesn't. Because the thing is, it doesn't make sense. There is no likeness at all. I'm flesh. Are you telling me God is flesh? Does God have five fingers? 
I'm, I'm, t I'm trying to make you think something. There is no likeness. When you say like father, like son, you can say, oh, you if know, that is the case, there is nothing. If that is the case that There's you are nothing. arguing, then we are arguing the verse in Genesis where it says no, that no. man was made in the image and likeness of I'm, God. So, if that is your argument, that's we have argument. to refer to Genesis. That's not my argument. But I don't even I need to go to Genesis. Yeah, but. Man was made hmm. in the image and likeness of God. And Jesus is God's only begotten Son. Look, but thank I'll, you. I'll finish no, with that. Thank you, Marcus. Thank, thank you. Thank you. My, but you know what? Thank you. Yeah. It was very pleasant speaking to you. Thank you very much. You. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, and thank I, you for the platform. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Have you read the Quran before? I have. Cover to cover. Okay, good. How did you find it? God is all merciful, and we can go with that. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think in a nutshell, brothers and sisters, Marcus was a very nice gentleman. We had a nice discussion. But in a nutshell, like we said before, these are emotional statements. You know, and we don't work with that. And you can see he's under the assumption that Jesus within himself, as if innately he has the powers to give life to the dead. He doesn't. And you know what's very interesting? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran, he says, with the permission of God. You know why? Because he knows, Allah knows the Christians are going to come with this. Otherwise, Allah could have said, Jesus gave life to the dead. Stop. Allah says, with the permission of God. Wallah is so sad. But anyways, that's it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey fellas, where are you going? Thank you very much.